got a great bunch of dapper looking guys here. Yes. Na naturally. Come on. Oh well, yeah, I should put my name and character name. Oh, oh. oh, how do you put your name on your phone? Dapper is my middle name. Didn't you know mm -hmm. that? No, I did not. Can't tell from the label, you know. It's like Okay, we are officially live on YouTube. Right. So I've got that up and I've got the chat up in here. So has everyone had a chance to actually watch it? Oh, yeah. I've seen it a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you have. Have I? <laughs> Looks great. I actually watched it again after Deborah was like, hey, there's this little tiny. It's really good. Yeah, I've watched it. And oh, uh, Michael, I got to say for us, especially my mom, you were like our favorite. My mom, she was like, his diction is so good. I can hear everything he says clearly. She's a teacher too, like me. But I was like, oh yeah, he's a principal. I was like, oh, that's why. <laughs> so I loved your performance. That must be his morning announcement voice. <laughs> <laughs> I pawned that off to the kids. The kids do that. <laughs> <laughs> so everything was great but yeah we, we loved your performance too thank you yeah thank you. a lot of people would ask me ahead of time so you're doing it over the computer what's it going to look like and I, i'd say you know your guess is as good as mine i know they got a uh, professional putting everything together but i have no idea what the finished product will look like i imagine it'll be just people in the scene as betsy alluded, but uh how it will come together and the transitions I'm very excited myself and it really came together nicely. And I forget the, the young lady's name who, who did the video editing for us, but it really super. Her name was Kay. Kay, Kay. Haley. Kay. Yes. Awesome. And um, she's hopefully going to be doing some more shows with us. So nice. that's fantastic. We're excited to have her um, as part of the team. Michael, did you have a lot of uh, your students um, or their families watch? They did, yes. Yay. Yep. They did and they, uh, they, they enjoyed it. They like coming out. They mentioned, you know, it, it was nice because the past two years we had Christmas Carol two years ago. And, um, it was Music Man this time last year. And then uh, they, they'd come to the, to the show, to the theater live. And they said to supplement, we got to, we, we just got to watch on the computer. So that was good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Hey, Zuzu, you made it. Zuzu. Hi. You Aww. look so cute. I love those uh, pigtails. Thanks. The braids. Oh, awesome. Oh, I'm so happy everyone showed up. Did everyone get to watch it again this weekend? Did you get to watch it again? No, I didn't get a chance to watch it this weekend. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's still it's still good till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. well, my Christmas tree is now up. It wasn't up for the first show screening so that a little jingly bell is an ornament on the tree so Aww. i was gonna get it and dingly it's like but i can't find it on the tree <laughs> oh <laughs> nice addison made me think of that it's like oh where's my little jingle oh. yeah we're ready, ready for christmas finished um i think i have only a handful of things to wrap still and then we'll wait for the big day for the big man to show up with the rest of them. I'm very excited. Now we've got a couple of things. Looks like they're going to show up at time for uh, Cupid to deliver them. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I've gotten so many things that say, you know, red, red um, on the USPS site, you know, shipping delays. So mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, hopefully everyone I sent packages to will. We'll get them in time. I don't know. Oh, was it only thirty percent? So now, do we have uh, any, any this weekend compared compared to last weekend? Because I, I would imagine last weekend was much more uh, highly viewed. Any any word on that, Deborah? Yes. So we had um, over seven hundred and fifty people view the show uh, last weekend, and that that's a record. That would have been uh, two and a half or three. Uh, Oh, no, it'd be three and a half full houses at FCT. So our little theater couldn't hold everyone. So we're delighted. That, that was last weekend, you said, right? Last weekend. And this weekend, you know, uh, tickets are still selling. So I won't know for sure until, you know, tomorrow night. Gotcha. But it, it's going well. I mean, we have people seeing. I think um, that date that we had um, of the 5th and 6th, I think that was the perfect date for people to see the show. Not too close to Christmas, mm -hmm. close to Thanksgiving. 
Yeah, we, we, we got it in before everyone else did there. So yes, Whoop. <laughs> that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, my son's was show was running the same weekend as ours was, so that was busy for us. Oh, yes. So do we have any questions uh, coming in? If not, I'm I not haven't seen any on YouTube or in the Zoom room so okay. far. I'm monitoring. I have, I have a few questions that have come through, and people were wondering, um, one of the questions was um, about the microphones and, and what that, how that all worked. How, how did we end up with um, all matching microphones? Well, that is a fantastic question. Thank you, Deborah. Um, the magic fairy came and she sprinkled some fairy dust and poof, they were just all made. And they ended and up in Sonia's house. showed up at everyone's houses. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, that's, that is the fancy story. But what really happened, folks, is that our assistant director slash technical director slash Slash, slash, slash. Oh, sorry, sorry, I, sorry. I can't remember all the slashes. Okay. Uh, but Sonia Bronder um, handmade all of those microphones out of um, a water, well, a juice bottle juice and bottle. a piece of wood. And she pan painted every single one of those. And uh, they just and turned I out so magical people. fairy helpers deliver them with me. <laughs> yeah, one of so, them was trapped in the car for five hours. <laughs> well it was all worth it because look we got we got everybody got their own um their own microphone and it looks so good yeah. and you know i don't know if people really realize they were fake i i don't think i honestly it, it seems i guess mine works. when i look at them on the tv they do <laughs> kind of look real but like obviously i had them all in my hand so i know how how they did they do look really great on camera so i'm really happy about mm -hmm how they turned out for on screen. That worked out really well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even in person, um, even in person, um, I know my daughter said, wow, what is that really cool microphone? Right? <laughs> and that was in person. So they just really do look very authentic. Yeah, I think very not true. only did they look good on camera, but they're a, a fantastic souvenir that we can take away from this because I mean, this was, this whole year was crazy. And yeah. we, 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 we capped off this year with something magical. And I think that microphone is a reminder of just what we accomplished. And I, and it was so great. So yes, absolutely. thank you so absolutely. much, Sonia, for doing that. Absolutely. No, I loved it. I mean, I remember when we started this, the three of us were like, oh, are we going to, you know, are we going to do the usual like t-shirts? Are we going to try to do something for the cast? And it just wasn't, um, it wasn't cost effective to have everybody order t-shirts when they're in their home and then, and everyone's experiencing what they did. So I thought, well, let's make them something really special that they, like you said, can have for the rest of their, their, their lives and, and look back on our, our production fondly. Okay. Did you let me in? Oh my God, this is so did, you, did, you, did you say there was another question, Deborah? Yeah. So they wanted to know about um, technology. <clears throat> excuse me, and how we did um, the uh, backgrounds and also um, how we decided on our streaming choice. Well, it was quite easy, actually. It yeah, was easy all. peasy. Easy peasy, guys. You know, we just waved a magic wand and everybody had the background and, you know, it worked. <laughs> it worked perfectly for everyone. Um, you know, we didn't have any troubles with it at all. No, I'm kidding. Uh, totally, totally big. Actually, the backgrounds were a challenge for a lot of people because... Um, the lighting, either it was not enough light or too much light. And some of people like poor Amanda, I think she almost had a nervous breakdown when, because we couldn't get her background and she tried everything. And she, and we, I mean, we had to like finagle and don't move, just, just stay still and just don't move. And yeah. so, you know, to get everybody's background, some people's computers wouldn't do the background. So we had to find workarounds for that. So it was, you know, there was a lot of tech issues um, with the with the background. And then once we made the, we, we did the backgrounds, we did the recordings, then it was an issue of, you know, um, getting the takes and the K and, and Sonia worked so hard on the back after the recordings were done to make the sound and the video match and be perfect and, and it was, it was like, 
to me, what they did was magic because I, I was beyond my comprehension. Um, so if you want more technical details about how it actually happened, I will let Sonia answer that. But it was, but they worked so hard on it. And, you know, without Kay and Sonia, this would have been a rinky dink. Um, Zoom <laughs> no, recording. you don't I'm have sure. rinky dink ideas. <laughs> well, no, but but I don't know how I would have ever pulled off my idea if I didn't have um, some some professional folks like Sonia. Sonia was such a professional during the show. I mean, you we should. I wish I could have paid you because it was so great. The what the work you did, you put in. I think more hours than anybody in this whole show combined. What working on this, and and so I really appreciate that, Sonia. Thank you. That's part of my job. It's all right. <laughs> I thought, you know, I will have to say uh, this new medium was was totally different than doing a live theater performance. Um, even uh, finding usable sound effects was completely different um, because of so much licensing and uh, co you know copyright issues. Uh, so it was it was a, it was a brand new challenge, um, and uh, I I do not. <laughs> I will never, ever, ever look at television people the same way because I don't, <laughs> I don't think people realize how much work is involved to put on just a, even a thirty-minute production of anything. Um, it's a lot. It's so much more than 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 we imagine. And and as a viewer, we take for granted how wonderful it all seems and how seamless it all seems. Even when you catch, you know, like a guy in jeans on a certain TV show, you know, there's little tiny or, mistakes. Or when a baseball hat was on someone's head and then magically appeared on a table. Appeared. Um, yeah, like all those wonderful little Easter eggs that people mm -hmm. catch. But there's so many people working on, on any production and this – this was new for not only Betsy and for Deborah and I, because, uh, you know, we're used to working with teams of people. I know there's usually quite a few of us to be able to kind of handle. So balancing that between the three of us, it took a lot, um, a lot of talking on Zooms after rehearsals, some tears, uh, lots of frustration. But I think that, you know, the three of us, uh, the mindset that we had to make this, a great production even with us being on this learning curve was just so wonderful and so fantastic and and it was just great to have that support and to know that you know i don't know what i'm doing and they don't know what they're doing so let's let's figure this out together <laughs> and and then have you know no weird expectations but now for the next show we we do have some weird expectations that's right <laughs> well one thing one thing that can help people understand is that even though, you know, the viewer is seeing everything in order the way the show is, that wasn't necessarily the way it was actually recorded. The best example are the WBFR seeing ladies. They didn't, they were not singing the same days that we were actually doing the performance recordings. That's an example of how things were inserted later on. Well, and, and the thing about it is, is they couldn't have even done it it couldn't have happened because there was no way that they could have sung it at the same time over zoom and 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 it wouldn't have worked because yeah, zoom was only going to hear one person so you know it, we we had to record them all separately and then um superimpose their, their videos down, into the yeah videos down right was, we had to listen to each other's like via soundtrack in a earpiece basically so uh -huh. we could, like match up because even though we had the sheet music and we could follow along if it was like say internet connection or just our mic in mm -hmm. but one instance it was off like it, it was trust us we had to edit that together it was a lot of yeah. it. Like, so we had to sing it's, multiple times yeah i mean one person holds a note just a millisecond longer than another Half person longer, and it just the, it, the whole thing it, it gets it gets really intricate and difficult i think the music was probably one of the hardest technical parts of the show would you say she did, Sonia? She, even, even the buffalo gals it, it, even the you know even though we gave everyone the same track just like uh adriana was just saying it depends on how your internet's playing it or how yeah. you're hearing it and 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 how it's getting back to the microphone so yeah it was not Kay's favorite part as i recall <laughs> um but yeah it was uh it was it was tough to get those together buffalo girls was i think she said the, probably the toughest one actually just the two of them oh really I um and that's only because of the, the their, their timing 
So they had the same track, but the way they sang it was, uh, the timing was different. So it was just one of those things where you, you try to get the video to match up. Hey, hey, between you and me, Amanda's not here. (laughs) He was off, right? (laughs) (laughs) I'm pleading the fifth of that one, Michael. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Hey, I have the the question of the day is, Allison, did any of your friends from school tune in and watch you perform on the big screen. You're on mute, Addison. Um, a few of them did, awesome. but a lot of them I didn't have contacts with because everyone's been getting like new phones and stuff. <laughs> and so they've been like getting new phone numbers. And so it's been hard to keep track of everyone. Uh, question number two, Addison, do you have a phone? Um, I had one, but then it broke and then <laughs> I tried to order one. But then it didn't. It came out of sale because everyone's buying new ones. So yeah, all good. You I don't currently need. don't have one. Yeah, it's okay. You're gonna make. You don't need one. You don't need one. Not <laughs> yet. <laughs> That's awesome, though, Addison. I bet they were real impressed. Addison, I thought you did a great job. Addison, yes. you did an amazing job. Yes, perfect Zuzu. Thank you. You were uh, one of the one of the trickiest things for for the for the George Bailey character was was going from zero to hundred to zero again. Um, in that scene where I'm getting, I'm snapping at everybody, snapping at the kids, and you know I go upstairs and see Zuzu, and and uh, naturally I'm not upset with her because she's sick, and I'm trying to check on her, and my tone's supposed to come down a little bit, and uh, it it happened very naturally because you have that that uh, very innocent, no, fix the fix the flower, you you broke it, paste it, <laughs> but it's like, okay, it, it brought my character uh, naturally down, so. It was, it was really neat. Hey, Stub. Hey, guys. Stub is Stubbs, yeah. You know, I I went back and I watched the original movie, and the the, the character of Joseph, we never see him as a human. He's a star and in the sky. And he's like a star in the sky, and I was like, that's so weird, because I didn't remember that. And I'm like, I keep picturing your face on the star, like yeah. you're talking. <laughs> Like the Teletubby son. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Teletubby son. <laughs> That's Joseph. That's our star. Yeah. So yeah, did we have some more questions? Funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do we have some more questions, Deborah? Um, yes. One of the questions is, did you stay true to the script? Yes. Yes, we did. <laughs> we stayed. I, I mean, if somebody switched one word, I'm like, you got to do it again. <laughs> that word is wrong. We oh, yeah. True to this script. Yeah, 100%. And it's funny because the script was very much based on the movie. I mean, if you go back and watch the movie, I mean, it's like the dialogue word for word that we used in our show. So it's like, you know, they, they really went true to the script when they made this adaptation um, from the movie. So, yeah. I kept wanting to, to uh, correct the grammar of my first line. I got forty-two dollars. <laughs> I do. I've. I've. Yeah. I mean, I remember that. That was something too in the singing because I remember when sheet music being offered the actual dialogue. So we're like, no, what the dialogue says, that's what we're singing. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another that was the tricky part too is with Buffalo Gals. Um, I remember you would say, hey, "Go ahead, sing it." I hadn't listened to the recording that was sent to me, so I'm thinking, <laughs> do, uh, "I know the the flick." I think I just watched it back the other day and you were just like, yeah, that's, that's not the recording. <laughs> I was like so off. Like, oh, I, I was doing the, the Jimmy Stewart, you know, when he did the, that pitch. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> it's true to the, stri- to the script, very much so. <laughs> Another question is um, what kind of editing went um, on for the show? Like the difference between rehearsing it on Zoom and the final, what kind of editing went went uh, into that? Uh, well, um, skilled editing. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, sound editing and video editing, I guess. I don't know. Um, we tried to keep the play as if we were doing it live. So we recorded it, uh, we recorded it 
as the whole as, as the whole thing as the scene and so the difference between any of our rehearsals and our actual recording was minimal other than adding sound post, effects post yeah post um recording the sound effects and everything else but we did we 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 uh Every rehearsal was just like a, a performance. You, you rehearse like you perform. Um, that I mean, way there you... might have been some instances where we, like, somebody didn't quite exit soon enough, so we faded their picture out early. I mean, but that's really the 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 extent of the editing, really. Yeah, no, we we really treated this like it was a live um, performance yeah. as 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 much as we could, and and we tried not to treat it as if it was television. Uh, that just right. it, that wasn't really written for that. So there wasn't a huge difference in the editing for that at all, uh, which was great, uh, other than adding sound effects. Thanks for the question. Yeah, but I think it was well rehearsed, and um, people were on the on on the ball, like getting in and out of the scenes on time. So we didn't have to do a lot of that kind of editing. So that really yeah. helps. One thing I was I was uh, going to cite as a, as a huge kudos to whoever the decision maker behind this one was, but. Initially, uh, as I'm sure everyone remembers, it was, okay, you sign out and you go back in the waiting room and then you come back in. Uh, and when, for those of you that don't know who are uh, not on Zoom, if when you're in the waiting room, you can't see the performance or you can't even hear it. So it's, okay, stare at the screen. When you're being <laughs> back in, it's somewhere around your next line. So <laughs> listen, adapt and go. And yeah. Really yeah, cool that, that did not work after the first like. <laughs> no, like the first time we tried it, I was like, I was panicking and I'm like freaking out, and Sonia's calling me on the phone, and oh, and I'm that? like, I can't do it. I and think so Deborah, Deborah hooked us up with uh, someone who had done um, a performance over the summer, and mm -hmm. um, she she advised us after many hours of tribulation uh, herself uh, of saying this was the best format for us, which was just leaving their cameras off and then having them turned on and, and everything. So that really helped. And Deborah was so great at getting, anytime we'd run into a, a speed bump like that, Deborah or Betsy, we, we'd we all just be like, who can we talk to? Who's been doing this already? Who can help us um, find out the best the best way to do this? And and then then I remember a couple weeks later after Betsy was like, okay, this is really working. We are really doing this. These entrances and exits are yeah. going so smoothly. We were so happy. She gets emails from people asking her, okay, what did you do? So now, now we're just passing on the information yeah. that we learned uh, to other theater groups uh, uh, in our community because it was it was like the uh, the biggest blessing mm -hmm. for, for trying to get entrances and exits. I I was panicking before I thought oh, I can't do this. There's too many. There's like forty people in the waiting room. I can't find the person to admit. And I was like I was like trying. I was I was it was bad. <laughs> so it's a good thing we that that we got that good advice. Work smarter, right? Not harder. That's excellent. exactly um, exactly. That's why I love working community theater. We have there's so many fantastic resources that we have that um, Falk here community theater has um, available to anyone who works in the theater at any level, whether it's an actor, whether it's a director. Uh, there's just so much great people in our circle that are always willing to step up and help. So uh, another fantastic reason why I love working with FCT, just a really great family. Mm -hmm. Curious question, just for the future, um, it's Fauquier County or Fauquier Community Theater. So uh, do you need to be part of Fauquier, do you need to live in Fauquier County to perform live? No, <laughs> no in no. fact, I started performing with Fauquier Community Theater in 2011. I have lived in Fairfax County the entire time. Oh, good. Okay. So, yeah. So, I'm no, you don't have to live. You don't, don't have, have to live in Fauquier County. Excellent. So speaking, they love everyone. <laughs> speaking of FCT, it was founded in 1978. So we're in our 42nd season. Wow. So we wanted to make sure to have a holiday show and keep up the tradition. I do have some quotes from people about the show. And they Fantastic. Are, uh, one, I was incredibly impressed with the awesome cast and all the technical expertise was magical. Yes. Another person, wow, what a wonderful show you created. Created. It was done to perfection and my husband and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you for keeping FCT vital and alive. Woo 
have a few more here. Um, one is the best online show I have seen, top quality all the way. Yay! Wow. And we we're know, just going to get better. Do we know, uh, not to, the cynic in me jumps out. Do we know how many, uh, out of the, how many online performances they've seen? Well, I can tell you. Um, Is he running numbers for us? What's going on? <laughs> He's a principal guy. So maybe that's why. <laughs> so, ladies, I have to say, this is by um, that quote was from Harry, right? The director. Oh, so, that's great, Harry Kantrovich. Well, you can you can describe Harry so that to answer that question. Harry's been doing theater probably since before I was born. Oh wow! And he has he's he's directed and I did a show with him. I did Oklahoma with him at Prince William Little Theater. And um, he's just a fabulous person. And he's actually gonna be directing pajama games, hopefully whenever it comes, whenever we can do be doing theater again. So I'm excited about that and getting, hopefully getting to work with him again on that show. Cool. And um, he's just a fantastic, fantastic person, but a fantastic director, a fantastic actor. He's got so many fantastic ideas. He's a great, he's a great guy. So thank you for asking who that quote was from. Um, that's who it was. Um, another quote, uh, truly enjoyed this and the actor playing George Bailey was sensational. I'll take credit for that <laughs> since I picked him. That was your quote, Betsy? No, no, I'll take credit, <laughs> the credit because I, I cast you as George. So it's oh, gotcha. <laughs> You know, she did. Was, she really did. Like we didn't have a choice. So, like Deborah and I could weigh in on everyone else, but George was cast. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it was perfect, perfect, perfect fit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely perfect. Oh, oh, the, Thank you. The chemistry between uh, George and Mary was fantastic. Oh my gosh, it was absolutely yeah. It was. Speak to the devil. My bride is here. <laughs> and have, have, has, has Michael and Amanda ever met in person before? No. No. And, and they, this kind of blows my mind now how fantastic they were as an on-screen couple and have, having never met in yeah, real can life. Can you imagine what that energy would have been like live? Wow. Yeah, yeah, I, that up, I think of that for the, <clears throat> the entire show, really. It's, 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 a, it's wild, the synergy that was behind it. Mm -hmm. It'd be neat to see live. Yeah, it would be really well, neat to see live. I would love if Deborah, if we could do this one Christmas a couple years down the road with this cast, it would be a phenomenal. <laughs> Definitely open yeah. to the idea. Tell I guess that. we're gonna have to get Mason to move from Colorado. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he's our purpose. Can I uh, can I ask a, another question? Sure. Um, he's still on here. Let me go to gallery view. Yeah, okay, there he is. Hey, hey. Mr. Potter, sir, uh, I, I I understand you, you've said you're you're a teacher, so I, I can only presume, and I, I must presume, just because you know your teacher. Is, I would the character Potter is, and you are polar opposites in real life. Is that fair to say? I would say so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. But Deborah also knows me, so I <laughs> hope she would say so too. Um, okay. Yeah, that's what she told us. Okay, good. <laughs> thank you, Deborah. Checks in the mail. Checks I, said, in. I said you were the sweetest man, and that you playing that role of Potter is pure acting because that is the most opposite of the Jeff Walker that I know than it could possibly be. So okay. that makes it even more phenomenal. I think that's that's why. Well, oh, oh, thank you. Well, it's fun. You know, when when I when I saw the auditions, uh, to be honest, I I think I aud. Uh, I think I read for Joseph, Clarence, and Potter, and I felt okay. I personally felt okay about all of them, but then when I got the callback, I kind of was thinking, I think they're leaning me towards Potter, I, I, I thought, you know. Was that after the third time we had you read for Potter? Oh. No, but you know, I don't know. I had him down for three different roles, so yeah, I'm we not did. sure that- I remember. I, I was, was a tough I was, one. Between Stubb and Jeff and Cliff, I was like, which I one do I put in which Cliff, role? I don't know. Yeah, uh, Cliff, Jeff, and Stubb were the hardest yeah. to cast because they, they could have played 
I, any of those roles. All three of those men could have played any of those roles. No, I think it was perfect. It. Yeah. I, could, I, I mean, Cliff, God bless him, I couldn't, uh, I'm trying to picture him being, you know, you know laughing <laughs> as I'm crying to him. That, that's a tough, tough I, know. Seen him I mean, I think it would role. some one day be fun to play either one, but boy, Potter was, I mean, it was fun to be, you know, the baddie. And, and, and I also thought about, I don't know if you all remember, some of you might remember there. Um, I, I didn't, I, I, vo I avoided looking at the mo movie and I, I avoided, other than just what was in my mind, I avoided Lionel Barrymore, but there is a character actor who lived a long time. He used to be in everything and he was Homer Bedlow in Petticoat Junction. His name was Charles Lane mm. and I think he might have even been in the original It's a Wonderful Life, but like as a as a banker or something. Anyway, I thought more about him and, and with my glasses and now that I'm older, um, you know, anyway, I um, uh, it was just a lot of fun to do. And because I knew my young leading man days were far behind me, uh, even on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyway, it was a lot of fun. You did fantastically. We were so happy to have you. Like I said, oh. the, the, all, honestly, casting this whole show was so tough. We had such a wonderful pool of actors mm -hmm. that could have slipped into <clears throat> any role and, and, and done wonderfully with them. And you uh, know what? I think, I think we hit the jackpot because we got everybody in the perfect role. And you know, I think if I would have been casting this myself or if Sonia would have been casting this herself, it wouldn't have been perfect. But because Sonia and Deborah and I were looking at it together and we were, you know, three heads are better than one. Oh, yeah. And, and we, you know, I think because we worked together on it, we came up with the exact right combination and the right people in the right roles. And it just, it clicked and it was, it made magic. Beautiful. It was, it really was. And you're well, right. And it was so great that one. you all had the right age. I mean, you know, children, the teenagers, the middle, the young adults, the, you know, George and Amanda. And I mean, and then all of us, the character people, everybody was the right age. It was, it was like, and, and you were able to cast all, you know, almost everything um, from that array of people. Mm -hmm. It was always a pleasure to just sit in unlike ever before sitting in on rehearsal, you know, in Zoom, <laughs> but I wanted, you know, I always wanted to hang out and watch. So that was a real blessing, I think. Uh, to that to that point, it made me think of two things. Um, my sister gave me feedback. She goes, that was a great show, Michael. I, I, I hate to say it, but I loved seeing uh, you getting talked down to by, uh, by Potter. He was phenomenal on there. Was, I'm sorry, but it gave me great joy. It was just excellent. <laughs> She also is she said, your older sister or younger sister? I'm the youngest of nine, so she's my oh, oldest. Oh, okay. Sister. I'm the baby, too, by the way. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Um, the other thing she said was, and this was kind of funny, she goes, I also liked um, how the the, uh, the how the how 25-year-old played the younger version of you. She's talking about, um, what, what was the kid's name? I Riley? Yes, yes. Yeah, Riley. It was, yeah, it was, just, it was just funny to me. I was like, oh, I didn't see the age the, the difference was was was. I'm not sure he was 25. No, I know he's not. He's like 17. Like, I, yeah. Yes, I, I'm, yeah. I, I've worked with him in the past. Yeah, he was good. <laughs> it was kismet. Absolute yeah. kismet for the show. Yes. What, about, what about you, Charlie? I know this was your first really acting experience. How did you, um, how did you think about how it all came together? Well, the, the first thing that struck me was how much time everybody puts into this, how much time that you're that you're either performing or waiting to perform. And it's it's a, a real wake up for me, never having done this before. I can imagine rehearsals, but having gone through it, I was surprised at how much time it really takes to to put on. And, uh, you know, my little part was like three or four or five lines. And yet the numbers of hours it takes to get those lines together or present them was dozens of hours just waiting your turn. If you logged in, wait your turn, say your parts and hang around a while and then log out, you've spent a couple hours each time. And uh, that was the that was the wake up for me of what it takes to do this. Everything else is, uh, and the, the Zoom technology was something that, I'd done a few uh, Zoom webinars in business 
and uh, you know where you just sit and listen. But this was a wake up for some of the technology, learning some of it myself, and uh, getting things set up here in the office to, to make it work. Tonight, as a matter of fact, I have no green screen. This is this mm -hmm. the bookshelves and stuff behind me that on this computer, which is my, my backup computer, it's not the one I did the show on, which was my laptop. My laptop is, is virtually brand new 12 months ago, uh, state of the art, but it needed a green screen to, to work. And my other, my main office computer that I work on, uh, same thing, I had to have a green screen, but this, no green screen. It's, it's probably a, a more recent processor, a more powerful processor than the others. It works. And if I move a little bit, you can see the white flashes that don't happen if you have a green screen. But it was good to learn the little bits about the, the zoom out of all of this. So James, question. Do you think that all the waiting and all the time you put into it was worth it? Well, it, you know, I say there's a lot of waiting, but I sat here at my desk over to my side here are, is my main computer and dual screens. And I'm sitting there working on something while I'm listening to what's going on. It doesn't mean I wasn't ready to, to say my lines, but I wasn't wasting time waiting, but I was just consumed. It's surprising how much time the process consumes. Now, it, you know, I, I, you can't see it right now. I don't know if I can turn my camera that, that uh, would show. No, it's, 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 I don't know why I won't show my other computers just right here out at just the side of the screen. Uh, so I was working the whole time. I was working tonight, paid bills tonight and watch the show again. Yeah, I think that's a, a huge difference, especially for um, an ensemble part. It, it, remember, you know, getting those roles where you only have a few lines, but then having to go drive to the theater after work, sit in the theater for the three hour rehearsal or the two hour rehearsal, do your five or six lines. But, you know, you're sitting in the dressing room or you're sitting in the audience just kind of watching it. Um, and I think that, you know, for multitaskers, this is probably great for actor multitaskers because you can be in rehearsal at Zoom, but still like, you know, uh, uh, like Charlie said, still be uh, actually doing other work that you wouldn't really be able to do in a theater, so to speak. One, one other thing I want to say to, to get me through this, I, I, it took all of the rehearsals for me to remember those lines. I won't say they're memorized. But I, you know, I now know those lines. But what I did was edit a copy, a PDF of the script, and did some little highlights around, you know, come in, go out, the big arrows here and there to, to keep me going. So my little script was, was edited on the top half of my screen while I was looking at everybody else down on the bottom half of the screen. I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without having the script marked up in front of me uh, to, to get in and get out at the right time. Well, I have to say, especially the role of Charlie was such a sweet thing for me to see, you know, at, in his part at the, at the in the middle of the show where he was, you know, wanting his two hundred forty-two dollars. Sixty days. That's right. Nice. And then, and then <laughs> part. He, he comes full circle to to giving that two hundred forty-two dollars back to help George at the end, and it's just so beautiful to me. You know that George that 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 he was willing to do that for George, and that how much George had touched his life, and, and and just even you know he wasn't you know Charlie wasn't um, the 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 hard, most hard off person in the show, but but George showed compassion to him, and George showed him love, and you know that came back in the end. I think it's such an important role. Charlie is such an important role to the show for that reason because. It just goes to show, even in the littlest ways, how much we can affect someone's life. Well, we know that from seeing the show so many times through rehearsals. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the casual viewer one time puts that together since they're so distant. I, I, I don't know if that, that really is something that people relate to or not. I, it would be good if they do, but I'm not sure. Well, I do, to me, I am an avid movie watcher and theater goer and I enjoy you know dramatic interpretations and so if I was just out watching the movie I would take that away as a as a me myself and of course I can't speak for the rest of the population of the world but um <clears throat> that that the role of Charlie to me was really important um to the storyline 
for that reason. So I hope that other people take that away too. Ah, uh, thank you. You're uh, welcome. I, when I watch movies, you know what I watch for? Or notice? What? Or flaws. Like yeah. when there's a glass on the table in one scene and they say something, the switches characters and back and the glass is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Charlie, do you know, uh, are you familiar with the, the, web, the IMDB website? Uh, no, not at all. It's a, <laughs> it's a movie database of films. So if I've seen a movie now and you, you, you get a kick out of this, you can go in and see trivia about any movie you watch or also goofs and goofs continuity er errors, errors are all over there. Kind of the stuff you're talking about, like tie was open one scene, next scene is closed and the next scene is open again. It's just little things. I bet you get a kick out of it. Yeah, I was watching a show the other night. I, we don't get much at home. Uh, so there's this one goofy channel I see and there's <laughs> these guys that are, that, that are put in survival situations. And you know they're out in the jungle somewhere and you know there's a camera crew there too. So it's really, <laughs> It's really not all that threatening. <laughs> but then you see the cameraman walking back, you know, with another camera walking back behind everybody. It's oops. <laughs> yeah. Cut that out. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's interesting that all of it is. Bill, um, can you tell us about playing, you know, a double part? Tell us about your secret for, you know, acting and doing a great job with both very different characters. Well, you, you just pretend that the part you're doing is the only part you have. I mean, really, I mean, it's been what it boils down to. I mean, when, when we did that with um, Winmore, I think I had seven different parts. So I had practiced the first time I did it because I, I was the um, announcer. And in that production, that, that part was greatly expanded from what it was in, in what, we, what we all did here. Plus, I played um, um, Potter and I played the head angel. And I played Collins also, and, and there was, uh, I think I played the sheriff and there was two, other, two others that I did. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but, but yeah, you just, you just kind of separate it. You just, um, you know, when I did Gower, I'm Gower. And I, I, when I do Collins, I'm like, well, I don't think about that. I just did Gower. I'm just, you just pretend like it's two separate things. And, and, um, basically that's it and and how i actually pull it off i couldn't explain it it's just just how i do it you know <laughs> i couldn't teach anybody how to do it because I, I can't explain it you know you just just kind of get into it you've been doing this a while evidently well uh i actually i i did a bunch of plays in high school and then i actually gave up acting until about 10 years ago Really, so I've, I've actually only been Dang doing it. this again for since. Well, I did some like little bit parts and stuff when when uh, when my daughter was um, doing the, this uh, in the cinema department at VCU, and they they kind of pulled me in to do a couple of little things. Uh, but I actually seriously have been doing this probably since 20, 2010. It was probably really when I. I think I lucked into a speaking role the first time I did something on television. So a PBS um, co-production with uh, Colonial Williamsburg about the War of 1812. I was so shocked. I auditioned for this thing. And I got the call two weeks later. Well, we want you for this part. And so, whoa, are you sure? <laughs> so, and I've probably been trying to live it down ever since. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I was I was very fortunate to get cast in, in um, Spielberg's Lincoln, and I spent two and a half weeks on that uh, with Tommy Lee Jones. And I was actually right. He, me and another guy were were placed right next to him in in the Congress scenes, and they actually bumped me to a speaking role. So that was you know that was like a classroom, uh, being able to watch Spielberg uh, do his thing and. Uh, so, you know, since then, just, you know, it took, me, it took me a while to get back into theater, though. I did these staged radio plays like we did here. I did a bunch of those to kind of get my feet wet. Uh, and I actually only got back into live theater uh, about, uh, probably about two years ago. I, I started doing some stuff with a couple of community theaters around Richmond. And uh, so it's kind of a circuitous route 
you know, back back to acting. So, you know, but we're well, really glad you're able to be part of this group. This is, you know, this is a great ensemble here. And this and this that I'm wearing, <laughs> this is my standard radio stage play costume. I think I've worn this in every one I've done. <laughs> Some variation of it anyway. And this is actually a 1940s hat. It's a 1940s tie and a 1940s vest. I got them from a, a, um, uh, a shop in uh, Carytown in Richmond that actually that's all they sell is actual. It's, they're not cool. right. It's just the actual cool. stuff. What is that? What is that store called? My wife and I went there, and uh, we were talking about it for bygones. Bygones. Bygones on Cary Street. Yeah. Yes. I mean, anything you want, they got, and they got a few knockoffs, but most of it's the real thing. So. Amanda, can you tell us what this role uh, meant to you, playing Mary Bailey? Um. Wow. That. <laughs> uh, where do I start? Um. I mean, this is pretty much the the movie is is probably in my top five favorite movies of all time. Um, it might be at number one, which is a big deal because I have I, I usually find it very difficult to pick favorites of anything. Um, and you know, I always loved that character of Mary Bailey, and I knew that there were stage versions of it. And I was like, you know, I would really love to play that character at some point in time and so this was really like a dream role for me and I'm still having trouble processing it because it's like you know this is very different from being on stage so it's it's like it's sort of like yeah I had the experience but it wasn't the same as as doing it on stage so it's almost like part of me doesn't believe that I actually had the role <laughs> um, but it's um but uh, you know, like this, I mean, this movie's meant a lot to me for over the years. Like I, I always related very, very strongly with, with George Bailey. Um, um, because, you know, I've been to be completely blunt. I have been there in the place that he is, you know, at the end of the movie where he's at the end of his rope and thinks, you know, my entire life has just been, a waste and it doesn't mean anything and that whole sequence from the very end where he he gets to see what his life looks like with or what life would look like without him in it all the way up until that that moment on the bridge where he's begging god to let him live again um it's so powerful like i can't even in this version i couldn't get through it without just bawling my eyes out and um and I think that it has a lot of meaning not just for myself but for other people who relate to experiences like that to me it's never just been a movie it's it's been it's something beyond that and I think that that's that's a really beautiful thing that th there are things like this in in storytelling and in art that can reach people in in that kind of way um, beyond just being something that people in, enjoy. I think that because the story has become this thing where, um, you know, it's such a big Christmas tradition and it is mostly in the US that people kind of overlook it as like, oh, it's just, you know, a cute holiday movie and the ending is very cliche at this point. But I, you know, like there, there's a lot of deep meaning to to that ending um you yeah, know and i i i always say that 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 final sequence really has literally saved my life on a number of occasions um so to actually be a part of a production of it like means more to me than i could possibly put in words so thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that <laughs> You did so great. You were so amazing. I, if I could throw something in here, I read an article the other day, and I didn't know this, but uh, when Jimmy Stewart, he did all those bombing missions during World War II, and when he came back, he actually was suffering from PTSD, severe case of it. And that movie, a lot of what you see in there is him kind of 
having a cathartic moment uh, of, of dealing with this as he's actually making that film. Uh, and I had no idea. It was the first I'd ever heard of that, but it's apparently it's a true, true story. So he, he the, film, the movie kind of saved his life too, in a way. Well, I think, you know, just the, the choice of not just doing something with FCT, but this specific show was really an inspiration for, you know, those who did, who said, hey, let's go with this, because this is, is really timely, I think, for a lot of people this year in particular. Absolutely. Um, you know, and Christmas time is it's um, so they have some of the highest numbers of uh, attempts and, and of uh, departures uh, in, in, a, in a way. Um, and I, I, I agree with Amanda wholeheartedly. This this movie wasn't just a Christmas story for us. It was a story of realizing what you have and really understanding how your how your part your role in your life isn't just one thing it's connected to everyone that you come into contact with and and you affect the lives around you and that there's this beautiful ripple effect and uh and when that ripple's gone when the angel shows um george what it what it is when he's not there I think that it, that it does. It speaks volumes about how powerful another human being's presence can be, and how you know if we're kind and we're good to each other, that you know we can make we can make everything a much better, happier place. Yeah, and I would just say that, like, I think it just speaks to how you know powerful in any art form is, but particularly in this case in, in storytelling, I think that people kind of look at it as sort of an expendable thing because there's what what is the practical use in something like this, but the the way that things like this can can touch people, like you just don't know how it can impact people. So um, I when I was in high school, I did a lot of theater and um, the the director, he would always say to us that theater is a service that you're giving people something that even if for just like two hours out of the day, you are giving them an escape from their lives. Like that's, that's a really important thing. And that's, that's something that's always stuck with me. Yeah, I think definitely any art form is just so important. I mean, um, unlike in Amanda's case, I wasn't able to do theater in high school. Uh, I actually came from a background of acting since I was three and I did so until middle school, but then the way that life worked out, I had a job and things after school. I wasn't able to do it in, during high school. Probably the time when most people want to do theater because it can get you to your future stuff. I wasn't able to do anything arts related then. So I didn't get back to it until I was like 19, 20, early 20s. Um, and one of the people I met was actually Deborah <laughs> when I was just starting back up. And it came at like the perfect moment in life. And I'm sorry if I'm getting a little emotional, but it's true. Um, when a lot of things just weren't clear and I was a person with plans, plans weren't going right. And it's true, just art like helps you and it saves you, it saved me, it gave me purpose. Heck, it's something I can't let go of now. Like I'm an adult, I'm almost 25 now. And some people don't understand it. They're like, why are you so busy all the time? Why are you just doing it on a show? It's like, I can't stay away from it. It's a part of me. Like it's something I need to do. And it's not just for me. Like I have little siblings, you know, I don't have kids, but my little siblings and Deborah knows that she knows me the longest year. Um, they're almost like my kids. I'm like, I need to show them like, you know, this is something that like, if you saw something that you cherish it, you do it. And um, I have a, I had a great teacher this past summer um, and you guys may know who he is, James Snyder. He's actually a, an actor in Broadway and um, we become friends. And during a class, I remember him saying like, the art of acting and just, you know, theater overall is just so like the way it's done, it's it's so wholesome. People don't realize in the fact that you are making yourself vulnerable and digging deep into things that you, you have you have dealt with or you want to show like every day, you know, uh, and people don't realize that you're, you're letting yourself be vulnerable to opening up and people are like, oh, you're just playing on the character and no, you're just digging deep and opening wounds and closing them back up just so you can make ev everything like a raw emotion. And I think that's beautiful. And to do it right now over Zoom in a time when a lot of people 
have been drifted apart from loved ones, you know, goals, dreams, jobs, you know, things like that. I think it was probably a very opportune time to do this. Uh, and what more with uh, such such a classic story that everyone loves. I mean, it's definitely one of my favorite also. So, yeah. I think there's a lot, lot to be said for that. Um, I think that's the reason why a lot of people are, are drawn uh, uh, to It's a Wonderful Life so much and uh, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever character they're particularly drawn to. It's just that, um, you know, I say in the classroom with the teachers, you know, a little vulnerability goes a long way with the students and I'm sure that the other educators on here can, can attest to it. Um, of course, you don't want to spill your whole life story and cross that line of, you know, professional versus, you know, uh, inappropriate. But uh, that vulnerability opens you up a little bit and the kids can see, it's like, how, how excited did they get when they see you out at the store? Like, wow, you don't leave the school? You actually go to school? <laughs> outside of school? Yeah. And it's just so cool to them that they see, wow, this per person's real. And I think that's why so many people love this movie and because they, they see uh, um, the character of, of George or the character of Mary and they're just like, wow, that is, that is at some point in my life, that has spoken to me um, tenfold. So uh, that vulnerability that the characters show, it, it lures the people in and they, they feel drawn to that character and connected. So that's why they like it, I think. At least that's, that's me talking, at least. I think some of the lines um, speak directly to us, right? I think we all have lines that just shoot right to the heart. Um, does anyone want to add to that? I'll, I'll go ahead and start. That, oh, daddy, oh my goodness, that, mm. oh, daddy line just strikes my heart. You know, um, when Janie is asked to stop playing the piano and then to restart playing the piano, that just, oh, that emotion, right, of, 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 uh, you know, being a child and, and being in that kind of situation. Uh, any other people have certain lines that speak to them? Um, I think for me, it's a one with when Clarence tells George, like, hey, you've been blessed, like, given a, like, this is a great gift, like, for you to see your life through our perspective with you not existing. I think that's a really big wake up call for anyone. I mean, I, for myself, sometimes I wonder, like, gee, I wonder what life might be like for so and so or you know, or, or in general, like for my students or my siblings or anything, if I weren't around, like, how would that be? And it's true. It, like the fact that that's portrayed in this movie, that is a gift because you don't really ever get to see that. You, you won't really. So, um, so yeah, it, it just, it's a big wake up call. Like, oh gosh, like, you know, like do not take, you know, your time for granted. Like um, my mom has this thing. She always says like, you know, the, the right time is never going to come to you. You got to make it. <laughs> so it, you can't wait for it. Just, just do it now. <laughs> if it's something you can, why not? You don't, like, don't wait. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, for I, me, oh. Oh, no, I, please go ahead. I, I know, for me, I would, I would say it's the, that line, um, you know, after George has seen what everything looks like, without him and he he goes and he says please god let me live again um you know that's that's the part that always gets the the waterworks going because i always say that there, you, you know people who are in that position they don't they don't really want it to end what they really want is a reason to to live and to keep going and it's such it's such a powerful moment to to convey that to to the audience What about you um, know, the, the, men uh, who died, the men who died on that transport? I mean, that's mm -hmm. just another line that just goes right to the heart, right? I wasn't there to save them because you weren't there to save him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say mine is when he's at the cemetery and he says, why is um, Harry's name on the gravestone? And he's like, well, you weren't here. So of course he fell through the ice and died. Um, that was one of those moments where I was like, wow, that, that's very powerful. You know, Clarence is kind of a very matter of fact about it, but he, in his way, he is showing George, you are, you have so much more value than this one moment in your life. Oh, right. And I think that I was just looking it up because I didn't want to mess it up. When Clarence <laughs> says, don't you see what a mistake it would be to throw it away? Mm -hmm. I mean, that just, if that doesn't get you, I don't know what does. <laughs> Um, the, 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 the toast at the end from, 
from, from Harry uh, is one that gets me too. Um, and I, I like to think that even if all the people hadn't come in with all the money, the toast would remain the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's know, to my big brother, George, the richest man in town. That's yeah, right. And richest, you know, uh, to, to, the, to the younger kids watching, who, who they might think, oh, he's the richest man because he's got all that money. But, um, you know, you because look, he has all those friends yeah, who love course. him. Yeah, and the writers, the writer was brilliant in emphasizing that aspect, you know, the message from Clarence and and making sure people understood. It's like it's not about money. It's about well, and, and it started out with the example of his own father, who, you know, you can't fault his character. He wasn't a businessman, but he was just there because he wanted to help people. Doing something big and important. You know, I like that we are doing something important. <laughs> I'm going to stage manage right now. We're at 10 o'clock, ladies. <laughs> Sorry. No. Uh, it Joseph, wasn't one of your roles, so yeah. I know. <laughs> Joseph, isn't in, uh, Joseph isn't in Act 4, but he has this line, uh, kind of this extensive spiel, right? And the end of it is, and Harry Bailey topped them all. A Navy flyer, he shot down 15 planes, two of them as they were about to crash into transports full of soldiers. And I was never around for Act 4 when they talked about, well, Harry Bailey didn't do that because he wasn't there because you weren't there to save him. He fell through the ice and died when he was a young boy. Uh, so, you know, it's it was interesting. I said that line many times and I never, until I saw the play, of course I've seen the movie, but until I saw the play, I never, it never really grabbed me. Oh, so yeah, he wasn't there to save those, those transport soldiers. It's funny you mention that. Uh, and this was on the on the previous talk back we did after the first showing, uh, for the when we did the performances or even during the rehearsal, I wouldn't have the the uh, the zoom up. I would have just the um, the script up, and so I didn't know who I forget uh, forget what his name was on the screen. The uh, the bartender and the bount he was the bartender. Glad you come, that guy. Oh, Martini. <laughs> Martini. Kirk, Kirk Lambert. Played by Kirk Lambert. Yeah. And who did he play as the bouncer? Binky. Binky, you got it, boss. You know, uh, I wasn't watching the screen, so I the whole time thinking, who is? I didn't know that was his. Uh, <laughs> was him. The same guy. <laughs> yeah. So I pointed that out in the last one. That, that was pretty neat because I mm -hmm. stuff. I didn't see it. I wasn't watching it, so it was kind of cool. You know, and I think that just goes to show, um, you know, how there are really no small roles there, you know, like, even if he was only Binky, he, he brought to that role so much. And I feel like, you know, each person who, who took on their roles really took them on and, and made them into these characters that we could believe. And like Kirk did with Mark, both Martini and Binky, I mean, Michael thought they were different people, I'm sure. <laughs> did. He didn't realize they were two, they were the same person. And I think that goes just goes to show the kind of talent that we have in this cast. That um and and definitely um Bill with, with Gower and Collins, you know. Yeah. Those were wildly different characters. And 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 I imagine if you were listening to it on the radio, not watching it, you wouldn't realize that Bill was voicing both of those characters. So I, I think Gower's my favorite. Yes. I loved I love the different the different Gower goes through a lot in this. Exactly. Show. And I think that's what I love. I love that progression. I love yeah. I love how if I if I was looking away at something else, I'd look back up and Gower's hair's messed up for the next scene. Yeah. Like he was he would physically prepare himself for the next mm -hmm. scene and it just it made my it yeah. just made my heart so happy how committed he was to really creating um a well-rounded character who, who who got to go through those I transitions thank, i thank you for the compliment you're welcome <laughs> it was they're great i love i will yeah. say I, I did i love collins he was there for like a hot minute but I, the progression of gower um from you know his life uh, youth is wasted on the young <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, definitely in the beginning when he was drunk and, you know, he was messing up the pills. I mean, it was so believable. You know, if, if I didn't, if I, if I didn't realize he was acting, I would think he was drunk and had, was in terrible sorrow and pain over losing his son. You know, it was just so, it was so believable. And that's you why know, the- I'll tell you something interesting. I had, I had just been a couple of weeks into, uh, I'm taking this uh, Meisner technique class um, just to add to my tool. Get fucking- and it's from, it's from, <laughs> It's proud. It's like this guy in LA. He's like the the number one guy, and this we're all doing the class on Zoom. But I learned enough from the first couple of sessions in that that I I kind of use that to really dig deep and not just be your standard stumbling drunk, but more get get more to the sorrow of what he was going through. And I actually had to find something in my own life that I could dredge up and make part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because normally, I mean, just sitting here, if you ask me to sit here, okay, Bill, cry about something. I'll be like, you got to be kidding, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, so it it, it kind of um, it g- gave me an opportunity to actually uh, put some of that to the test. Uh, Bill, well, if you get a chance, uh, check out Sonia Moore and um, Stanislavski's um, the, the Stanislavski method. Um, oh, yeah, it, I'm reading about that. I'm, I'm yeah, reading it's actually it. fabulous. Um, I'll, I'll text you this book. Sonia Moore wrote this book and we used it when I was in high oh. school and, uh, changed my life. I mean, I think that's the style I probably as an actor stick most to. And I, you know, I've experienced some of the others and, and they all are kind of the same principle where you're digging from this well, you're drawing from this well. Um, but I think you would really like, you would like it. Okay, so, I'll, I'll send that to you. Yeah, sure. And I'll be honest, though, sometimes I just fake it. <laughs> I mean, I'm being serious. And, and, and I know that if I were to say that to the guy that's teaching the Meisner class, oh, he would be incensed. <laughs> I, 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 I seriously is, doubt he'd be incensed. I can't tell you how many famous people faked it till they made it, so to speak, yeah. um, and then went and got the training after the fact. Um, so fake this, this whole class, show. But, Faking but, you know, it pulls from a whole new well that you weren't yeah. even <laughs> you weren't aware was there. <laughs> See, my my approach has always been kind of I'm kind of like a generalist. Uh, I've got my my Bill Kaffenberger style of of doing a part, and um, you know I I pull from whatever works, you know, and and may, maybe I'm, I know I'm going to use this Meisner stuff. I'm going to use it. But I'm not going to be like the teacher who's my my God has changed my life so much that I'll never do anything else. I mean, this Ugh. this guy is like he's like really into it, which is good because it makes him a good teacher of it, you know. But for me personally, I don't I don't think that's the only thing I'm going to use. It's like that's may, that's going to maybe be my big hammer, but sometimes I need the little hammer. Yeah. Uh, so, and then the some, right sometimes right I just fake, I just fake it. I say, okay, what would Bill Kaffenberger do? If he was, this <laughs> what would Bill do? You know, so to, uh, to, to draw on, on on the point Bill's making, it, it's it's important to know, uh, especially in, in this case with with the with with our characters, but the why behind every character. Yes, you know, for so many years, the the Wicked Witch of the West, worst 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 you know worst villain. Then you learn we learn more in Wicked, and it's like oh you know you learn this 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 different person and. Uh, I think a lot of people can relate to that. And hopefully they, they do draw that in everyday life and they think, oh, this person to, to, to go uh, more topical references people today. And if this person's uh, protesting that or, or on the other side protesting that, there's a why behind their, their behaviors and their actions. It doesn't condone misbehavior. It doesn't make us okay with it, but it, it helps us draw shed light on why they might be saying what they're saying or what they're doing. And I hopefully it, it at least adds some compassion and, and empathy in, in, into our thinking, um, and it creates a bit more civility. And, and to, add, to add on to that, I, I I know when I when I started doing I did done a lot of background stuff, and I I've, I've ended up being featured background numerous times. Not any lines, but they put you with the main actors. But I figured out the reason that they did that with me is I always did exactly what you're talking about. Even being a background character, I made up my backstory. This is who I am. 
This is my situation. Here's how I got here. Here's where I'm going, which is all, all part of these methods, you know, the, the techniques that we're talking about, that's all part of it. And um, I didn't realize that for a long time. What I said, why am I always so lucky? They stick me with the main people most of the time. And I finally figured out that was why, because I'm not being like they would tell you. If you're walking across the street and that's all you're doing, don't be a zombie. Be doing something. Talk to the guy next to you. Maybe not out loud, but you know, pat him on to the guy yep. next to you. You maybe your maybe your your father died and you're you're heading for the funeral party, but have something going on. And uh, you know, it, it's essential even in, even when it's a little small, dumpy little nothing part. You 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 got to make you got to make it something, and that's that's how you gain experience too. Yes. So. Yeah, anyway. when, when I was studying at the theater lab in DC, they would make, they, they have a, like a year long program for, it's like you, they get 10 students as they call it the honors program and you, you do it for one year and it's like, they give you all these classes. It's very intense. Um, but, um, they would make us, there was one class where they made us play this game called the eraser game where, so the eraser is supposed to represent whatever the character wants and then we put like two people together and they were, the teachers just told us do whatever you can to get the other person to give the eraser to you. And it would turn in, it was like all improvised but it would turn into this really intense experience because you, you just got so caught up in the moment of like, I need that thing, I want it and I'm gonna do whatever I can to, to to get it and um I mean, like I remember doing it and it just got like so incredibly emotional and it would just like push you to th these extremes of, of trying to get the other person to 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 do what you want to give you what you want and it was a great way of learning this idea of getting into like a character's head and understanding that like every scene each character wants something out of that situation, out of other people, and everything that they do and they say is a way of trying to get that. It's not just like, oh, they're not just saying dialogue or they're not just getting up and walking over to this side of the stage because they were told to. It's like, there's there's a reason behind it. They're trying to get something. And that, that was a really great experience to have. <laughs> yeah, this, the, uh, one of the exercises, this was, I was very skeptical about this, but one of the first exercises they had us do in this class I'm taking was kind of a, similar to that, but is a little different in that you're, you're, what you had to do is you had to pick somebody, you know, a, a fellow or girl with whatever would work for you. Um, and it, it's something in your life that's unsettled. Like maybe you need to make peace with somebody or, something it's it's got to be something that's meaningful in your life and that that person in this case that your partner becomes that person for you and you have to whatever it is you need to make peace or convince them that's what you got to do and you can't think about it you just you have to do it like it's real life and those i think those kind of exercises help because it, it you you don't think about okay, what am I going to say? Or what am I going to do? You just, it's like real life. You just, it just comes out. So it's kind of cool. Jeff, would you like to wrap it up with um, kind of your perspective? I mean, you've, you've directed over 40, you know, plays and musicals at least. And, you know, you do some great writing, uh, critiquing different productions. Um, could you just give us your perspective on all of of the show? Well, what I was struck by when we introduced ourselves in the, you know, early on is due to this technology that you, that FCT embraced for this show, you know, Betsy and Sonia uh, leading the, this thing, but we had people, and we talked about it earlier in the, in the in tonight, we had somebody in Colorado. We had, you know, we had people from coast to coast, basically, in a community theater production in Fauquier County. Uh, 
<laughs> so we were in Fauquier County, but yet we were across the United States of America. And so what I think is, is that in the midst of a pandemic that has just given us all added stress and, and, and fear sometimes and frustrations, there are these little glimmers of sunshine and little glimmers of hope. And like we, we talked tonight about how important art is, which how important theater is and telling stories and telling stories that, that help that massage the heart and, and touch us in our, in our, in our souls that Fauquier Community Theater was able to harness this new technology and create a new kind, you know, this is a new kind of community theater uh, that embraced uh, not just all ages, but people from all over the place. I think that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was very exciting to be part of, you know, um, and, and I think um, everybody, um, it, it, it's a nice, I think this was a great, um, way and, and and as you say there are already plans uh, to to keep building and keep going and you have nowhere to go but up so i think it's really cool fantastic work everyone i think it's really cool too when i talked about this show to my friends i said you won't believe this this show was cast was auditioned cast rehearsed recorded and streamed online i said I have never met any of these people except <laughs> Doug. I've met you in person. The rest of these people, I've never laid eyes on you in the flesh. I hope I will sometime. Wife, Sub. Say again. I met your wife. Oh, okay. Well, I met her too. But that was, uh, <laughs> that was that's so, you've met me before. <laughs> we meeting the cats when we dropped those bags off, but oh, I met okay. Stubb's wife. I dropped the bag off. No, I got it. Yeah. No, I met her 55 uh, years ago, too. But uh, I still introduce her as my first wife, just in case, you know. <laughs> hey, Stubb, you yes, met me before. As as I do. But anyway, I, I, uh, I really enjoyed this. And I, I gather from what you said before, you'll be doing more of the online things like this. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to the time we can get back where we're doing it on stage and I could be with the people and actually see some of these people in person. Uh, now, Bill was saying before he was in acting in high school and he laid off for a number of years. I la laid off for 60 years. And oh my gosh. And stuff, uh, I mean, I've been in front of people and singing and with the band and everything, but I haven't been acting for a very long time. And uh, it's very nice to be back doing it. One of the problems, of course, is I couldn't read for uh, for George's part. I said, well, that's probably not going to work. But uh, but I read for Clarence and Joseph and Uncle Billy, and I thought, well, I could do do those. So I'm hopeful that you know there's there's places for uh, all ages. I always got a kick out of when when Deborah would put out a note that says, "From eight to seventy-eight, we have people." And I think it's so great that FCT has room for people from eight to 78 uh, or maybe 79 next year. <laughs> Just keep shifting it. <laughs> well, you guys were an amazing group of people. I'm so blessed to have had the opportunity to have been at the helm for this show. And I could not have done it without, without all of you guys. You were so amazing. And you each played your part perfectly. And I'm just very blessed. So thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, I'm, we're, we're hopefully going to be able to do this on stage at some point. Um, and maybe we can do, I don't know if we'll do the same script or we'll use the, in the long version maybe for the theater. But hopefully, um, I will definitely, if, we, if we, are, we get the permission to do this on stage, I will be contacting all of you to to see about doing this uh, live. So hopefully you will still be uh, available and in the area and we will we'll do it. So I really appreciate everybody's work on this. Well done, Betsy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas. Holidays. Holidays. Merry Happy Christmas. New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Mr. Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, you building and alone. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, Betsy. Thank you. You're Dad. very welcome. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.